Gracias. Yes. This place is fantastic. I mean, it is a meat lover's paradise. It's a grill lover's paradise. But when you walk in the door and you look at this taco corridor here in the Oaxaca market, you might be a little intimidated. He might not know where to go, where to start. So let me just step you through the whole process. This taco corridor is filled with a whole slew of independent vendors selling meats and tortillas, vegetables, even soft drinks. But before you do anything else, you need to grab a basket of knob onions and those spicy local chiles de agua. Then it's on to choosing your meat vendor. There are dozens available, but truthfully, it's hard to make a bad choice here. I first like to find a meat stall that offers the kind of grilled meat that I'm interested in, and today it's going to be aged beef tasajo and some port sesina, beautiful looking chorizo sausage. The meats are cooked over a hot grill while the sausages get tossed directly under the grate onto the coals, right alongside the peppers and the onions. This is really rustic cooking. That's all turned over the fire until the meat is a little charred and smoky and the vegetables are soft and blackened in spots. Now, it wouldn't be Oaxaca unless you could purchase those large, supple corn tortillas for your tacos. Then you head back to the condiment stalls where they'll prepare the grilled onions and the peppers with a little fresh lime and a sprinkling of salt. Once you sit down, you're offered even more choices of salsas and condiments. Okay, this is the moment that I have been waiting for. Super rustic stuff. I've got my little condiments and, and seasonings there. I'll take a tortilla, and this is all finger food. So the first one I want to have is the tasajo, that grilled aged beef. Beautiful stuff. Okay, so next thing is to put a little bit of the, the chili on there, but I'll warn you, stuff is hot. A little bit of onion goes on there, a spoonful of the roasted tomato salsa, beautiful piece of avocado. These are huge tacos because they're made with those blanditas, the handmade corn tortillas that are so famous here. That is perfect. No matter where you eat street style tacos in Oaxaca, you're always gonna find ones that are made from that thin sliced pork. It's what they call cecina, and I'm gonna show you how to make it from beginning to end. In the traditional way, it starts with guajillo chilies. Those are the smooth skin chilies. You pull off the stem end, open them up, and then knock out all the seeds that are on the inside. Next, they have to be toasted. So heat a dry skillet over medium, then open them out flat into the skillet, press them down with a metal spatula until they're very aromatic. They'll slightly change color. Flip them over, Press them down for another 10 seconds or so, then collect them all into a bowl. Cover them with hot tap water and let them rehydrate for 20 or 30 minutes. I like to put a plate on top of them to keep them submerged. And while the chilies are soaking, I'm gonna roast garlic in that same dry skillet over medium heat, each clove in its papery husk. After about 10 to 15 minutes, they'll be completely soft. They'll get a little blotchy black in places. Let them cool a little bit and then pop them out of those papery skins. When the chilies are ready, take them out of their soaking liquid and put them into a blender jar. Add the garlic and then add spices. Classic combination in Oaxaca is cinnamon, black pepper, and cloves. I'm grinding them here in a traditional Mexican mortar or moncajete. Add that to the blender jar, along with cider vinegar, a little water, and a good amount of salt, because this is the seasoning marinade. Blend all of that until it's as smooth as you can get it. Then scrape it into a medium mesh strainer set over a bowl. 
press it through and you've got your finished red chili marinade. Now this stuff will last for several weeks in your refrigerator. Now the marinade is finished, the red chili adobo, and onto the meat. So I have a piece of pork loin here. But the first thing that we have to do with pork loin is to get all of that silver skin, that tough silver skin off the top of it. So I'm gonna cut that off. And if you don't cut it off, you're gonna have some pretty tough sashimi. So there we've got a completely cleaned piece of pork loin. All the silver skin's gone, all the fat's gone off of it. It's a little thicker on this end than it is on this end. So I'm gonna start actually doing this right in the middle of the pork loin to even it out. And just using sort of quick sawing motions like that, that can then open up like a book. Now I'm gonna flip the whole thing around. And now I'm gonna come back the other direction. I'll unfold the whole thing again. You may wonder why I'm doing this. This is tradition. This is the way that it's typically done in Mexico. You could just slice right across and make your pieces of meat. We're gonna cut it up anyway into um, smaller pieces here. But I thought it'd be fun to show you the traditional accordion cut because in markets in Mexico, you can find butchers doing this all day long. Once the pork is cut into one long strip, I roll it up and then marinate the meat on a sheet pan, first layering the marinade underneath the pork, topping it with some more, then folding the pork over onto itself and repeating that whole process until everything is completely coated with the red chili adobo. It goes into the refrigerator for at least a couple of hours to marinate. Actually, it's even better after a couple of days. One of my favorite salsas to go with any kind of meat tacos is really, really simple. It starts with raw tomatillos, and I'm just peeling off the, the husks here of four of these tomatillos. And then I'm gonna chop them up because everything's gonna go in the blender together and there's no cooking on any of the ingredients that go into this salsa. So I know that'll make a lot of you really happy out there. So cut them into sort of smallish pieces and put them into the blender. Now the next thing is some chili. I like to use the serrano chili. You could use jalapenos for this or practically any kind of little hot pepper. So we're gonna throw those in there as well. And then a clove of garlic. Mash that to be able to skin it easily and fast. And then that's gotta get chopped up a little bit. Got some cilantro here and throw that in there. I'll need a little bit of water to get this started. And put the blender jar top on, and then we're gonna make it into a kind of coarse puree. Okay, now we've gotta season it and add the magic, and the magic is an avocado. So I'm gonna scoop this into the blender jar. I'm going to add to it a little bit of salt, put it back on the blender, and make it into now a smooth and very luscious textured sauce. one of the freshest, most delicious salsas that you could want for any kind of taco. Now it's time to start the grilling. Lay on the knob onions with a little sprinkling of salt, then go on to prepare the meat. The first thing you have to do is slice it into more manageable size pieces. Then spray those slices on both sides with an oil sprayer to prevent them from sticking to the grill. Just when it's time to flip the onions, the meat is ready to go on to the smoky heat. Look at how juicy and beautiful that pork is. Gotta have a little 
bit of the meat. Some of that fresh avocado tomatillo salsa that I love so much. A little squeeze of lime. That's good to eat. In Oaxaca, they take the concept of live fire cooking to a whole new level with caldo de piedra, stone soup. It's a pre-Hispanic tradition, and it's still being carried out today in a restaurant in Oaxaca, where stones are heated in a wood fire and then dropped one by one into gourd bowls to cook the soup. I had the opportunity to speak with Cesar, the owner of the restaurant, and he described to me the history of this sort of unusual preparation. Now, according to him, only men are meant to prepare this dish because it's traditionally offered in honor of women. Cesar walked me through the preparation of this ancient recipe that consists of crushed red shallots, tomatoes, cilantro, epazote, jalapeno, a sprinkling of salt, and a good amount of water to make the broth. A fish steak and a big handful of shrimp go in last. And when the bowl is ready with all those completely raw ingredients, they drop the fire hot rocks into the soup one by one to cook. The soup was served at the table still boiling hot. It was the perfect moment to have a conversation with Cesar and his family while we watched the soup finish its cooking. A little bit off the beaten path outside of Oaxaca City in the town of Sachila is one of my favorite places on earth for Mexican barbacoa, La Capilla. Now, Mexican barbecue isn't exactly what most people would imagine in the U.S. Well, for starters, their barbacoa pits are literally holes in the ground with a hot fire inside. At La Capilla, they start with a whole lamb that's been cut into large pieces and rubbed with a flavor-packed red chili marinade. They tuck most of the lamb into a large basket surrounded by huge branches of avocado leaves. One or two large chunks of the lamb are put over a pot that's been filled with vegetables and herbs and water for a soup that will cook slowly underneath that lamb. Everything is covered abundantly with avocado leaves before it's ready to be cooked. The first step in the cooking process is to remove the lit logs from the pit. At this point, the residual heat of the bricks and the coals is all that lamb needs to cook to a delicious tenderness. Both pans of meat are positioned over the coals and then the pit gets covered. Artemio topped the whole thing off with a thick layer of soil. Traditionally, the pit is decorated with a cross and a couple of bottles of mezcal get buried under the soil. After about eight hours of slow cooking, Artemio and I unearthed that mezcal and then we removed the rest of the dirt from the top of the pit. Everything had already cooled down quite a bit, so it was easy to take off all those avocado leaves and to remove the meat. The meat was so tender, it was literally falling off the bones. And the juices from the lamb had dripped into the pot, creating this luxurious, flavorful soup that's always served first as part of this celebratory meal. First thing is this incredibly aromatic soup, and there's a little garnish plate that comes with it. It's got some chopped chili, I think it's serrano, a little bit of white onion, and then this soup, because it's so rich and full of flavor, I think does it incredibly well with a squeeze of lime in it. Now what you find in this soup, chock full of vegetables, there's potatoes and carrots and green beans in it, You'll also find little bits of meat. Mm. And the pieces of meat 
are the liver and the heart that simmer along with it. Of course, there's some red chili in here. It's a sort of medium spicy red chili and some more of those um, avocado leaves, some bay leaf. I, I think I taste a little episote in here too. But the real treat is what comes next. So this plate consists of that long cooked lamb barbacoa that smells of the avocado leaves, that sort of herby, anisey smell. We've got the black beans that are so typical here, the smooth black beans also cooked with avocado leaf, a little slice of the blood sausage that cooked in the pit, and then just some fresh vegetables on the side to eat right alongside it. Now, we've got a simple salsa made from arbol chili that I'm gonna spoon over the meat here. I guess you could make tacos if you wanted to, but I just think this is so beautiful. I want to eat it one bite at a time. Um, and I like, I like to taste it all. Um, but that barbacoa, it tastes not just of Oaxaca, it tastes of this restaurant, and that's why you come here. You come here to enjoy these beautiful flavors, these unique flavors, and boy, you'll never forget it. Traditional barbacoa in Mexico is done with a whole animal in a pit in the ground. But I've figured out a way that you can translate that technique to something you can do on your grill in the backyard. And instead of a whole lamb, I'm gonna use the bone-in shoulder roast. Now the first thing that we have to do is to make the red chili marinade. Typically it's made from whole chili pods, guajillo pods or ancho pods. I'm gonna start by sauteing a little bit of garlic in some hot oil. When that's really aromatic, I'm going to add ancho chili powder. Now this is just the pure ground ancho pot. Then I'm going to add some Mexican oregano, some cider vinegar, some salt and sugar, and let that cook until it's really dark. Then I'm going to add water and let it simmer for a few minutes. Cool all that off and it's ready to use. Now instead of that pit in the ground that's traditional in Oaxaca, I'm going to use a roasting pan, a V-shaped roasting rack. I'm going to actually put the ingredients for the soup in the bottom of the roasting pan, then put my lamb on that roasting rack above it so that all those beautiful juices can drip right down and flavor that soup. Now to make that soup, I'm gonna start by cutting up a couple of carrots, some potatoes also in the small little cubes, a couple of cloves of garlic, I'm just gonna cut them in half after I peel them. A small onion, chopped. A can of garbanzo beans, and I'm just gonna tip off all the canning liquid. A few leaves of that favorite herb from Southern Mexico, the one that's called epazote two quarts of water, and a teaspoon of salt. That'll be enough to get me started. I can come back and season the broth when it's done. Now I'm gonna nestle this roasting rack down into our soup ingredients, just like that. Lay some avocado leaves in there. Now the bone-in lamb shoulder roast is gonna go on top of those leaves. And then the cooled off marinade, I'm gonna spoon that over and around this. Some of that will fall down into the soup to give it flavor as well. The rest of our avocado leaves to give more flavor to the top part of this lamb roast. And then a layer of foil over the whole roasting pan. Now I've set up the grill for what's called indirect cooking, meaning that I've got the fire all on one side of the grill. Then I'm gonna slide 
our lamb barbacoa on the other side of the grill. Now I'm gonna let this cook for about four hours, but every 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more charcoal so that I can keep a consistent heat in this. And I'm gonna check to see if the water level is about the same. If it seems to be evaporating, I'm gonna add a little bit more liquid, cover it back up, and then close it up and let it continue cooking. The typical salsa that's served with the traditional Oaxacan style barbacoa is a very simple one. It's made from roasted tomatillos, a little roasted garlic, and a smoky hot chili. It's called a chile pasilla oaxaqueño, or a Oaxacan style pasilla chili. It's a little hard to find in the United States, and when I can't find it, I go for the canned chipotle. Now to make this simple sauce, the first thing you have to do is to husk the tomatillos and then roast them. Since I'm outside, I'm just gonna roast them in a skillet on the grill until they're sort of blotchy black in places and completely soft. Alongside the tomatillos, I'm gonna roast a few cloves of garlic still in their little papery skins until they're completely soft. While those are roasting, I'm gonna to toast the dried chilies in a skillet over medium heat, flip them over, press them down to toast the other side, put them into a bowl, cover them with hot tap water, slide a plate on top to keep them submerged, and let them soak for about 20 minutes or so. When the chilies are ready, take them out of their soaking liquid, drop them in a blender along with the peeled garlic and the roasted tomatillos, and turn the blender on and let it go until you've got a coarse puree. The final step is to get the right consistency in the salsa, so you may wanna add a little bit of water to it to make it sort of easily spoonable. And then season it with salt and just a touch of sugar if you think that that'll help to bring out that beautiful smoky spiciness of the Oaxacan pasilla. Now this is the moment. Pull this oil off of here. Take these leaves off the top. Sort of pick it up now. Start taking the meat off the bone. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna lay that onto our serving platter. A little coarse salt or flaked salt to sprinkle over the top of it right now. And I have some parsley, classic accompaniment in Oaxaca that may surprise a lot of people. And now to this flavorful consomme, smoky with so much wonderful lamb flavor. Have plenty of fresh hot corn tortillas to serve with your lamb barbacoa. The classic, simple, smoky Oaxacan salsa and your consomme. This is a Oaxacan feast.